Hello everyone and welcome to Easy Electrical. So today is the third day of electrical machines class and uh, today I will also continue with the DC machines part and I have selected 10 very important questions. Just be with me and uh, you will learn a lot today. Now <clears throat> some of you might be knowing that we are running an SSCJ online course and in that SSCJ online course we basically cover from starting from non-technical, technical part. Other than that, the test series is included, practical papers are also there and recording sessions are also provided to all the students. Okay, so this recording is free and you can download it and keep it to yourself for a lifetime. Okay, that is that much assurity that we are giving you. And other than that, some practical sessions are also included here and a specific special notes are also provided for the exam purpose. Suppose you are giving a WBPSC examination or suppose you are giving a SSC JE or a Railways JE. That much portion is covered okay so it's a comprehensive uh, course now <coughs> uh, today's class is on uh, dc machines that is our third class and in the third class the first question that we are taking up is uh, that is your a commutator in a dc machine provides basically commutate the purpose of commutator the purpose of commutator is to rectify okay now because uh, what we have observed that uh, suppose this is the coil single turn coil if i have taken now you must have seen something like this structure is already uh, you some of you might, might be familiar with suppose this is a dc generator and in the dc generator uh, if the coil you rotate if the coil you rotate and uh, place it in a suppose in a magnetic field like this north pole south pole then what will happen is in the coil itself the ac will be generated and the slip rings that i have just uh, drawn here uh, this is the earlier version and this slip rings will ultimately convert this uh, dc voltage to an uh, this ac voltage to a dc voltage across the load and this conversion is basically nowadays done through the use of commutator now the full wave rectification is basically what it is uh, done through a commutator okay so the development of this uh, commutator is basically earlier it was split ring split split ring and uh, before that it was slip ring slip ring slip ring arrangement is there here the arrangement what i have shown here is basically the slip ring arrangement okay in case of split ring something like this is there in between the uh, there is a mica sheet that is provided and the brushes are connected on the two ends and uh, the output is basically taken from uh, these two points okay now coming to next question a two pole dc generator is running at 1500 uh, rpm the frequency of the armature winding so some of you might be thinking about what this is a dc generator how can it uh, have a frequency so that part i have already covered that inside the coil there is a generation of ac so the same principle will apply that means ns is equals to 120 f by p if you apply this formula and uh, if you want to determine the frequency that is p into ns by 120 you will get something like this 2 into 1500 divided by 120 so if you do then it will be uh, 60 uh, 60 and if you cut this then you will get 50 okay so uh, there will be 50 50 sorry fi not 50 sorry not 50 this is uh, this is your 120 hertz and uh, the calculations the calculations is basically your um, suppose just let me recalculate it once again that is your uh, it is 1500 right here it is your uh, 120 120 by p now if you just uh, cut these two that means uh, 120 another zero is getting cut so here you can get 6 so that is 150 divided by 6 now if you just divide it 3 that means 50 2 that means your 25 so 25 hertz will be the answer okay so 25 hertz will be your Answer. If you just put the value ns equals to 120 pi p or p n by 120, you will get the 25 hertz answer. Now, coming to next question How do you connect the interpole winding and compensating winding with the armature circuit? Basically, just keep in mind one simple thing that both of them are connected in series. Their purposes may be different, but their connection with the series winding is basically the same. They both are connected in series. Now, speed control by the field flux is. Field flux control is basically one such method where we use to control the speed of the machine above the rated speed. Above the rated speed. Rated speed. Rated speed. 
okay so one formula we know eb uh, is equals k phi n eb is equals k phi n so speed we can see eb divided by k phi eb divided by k phi if phi we reduce what will happen is n will increase if we reduce the flux the speed will increase that means above the rated speed we can uh, con uh, control the speed of the uh, motor or the dc machine here so constant power drive is one such uh, answer for this question one one more question they ask that what type of uh, speed control can be achieved that is above the rated speed speed control can be achieved via this field, field flux control and armature uh, armature resistance control is another method in armature resistance control what we basically do is we control the speed below the rated speed above the rated speed we use field flux control and below the rated speed we use armature resistance control now coming to next question two machines x and y have the armature resistances given and it is 0 0.5 ohm and 1.5 ohm respectively so out of the options the option uh, b is correct okay uh, x is uh, bigger than y that means x is having a higher uh, higher rating uh, for the same voltage rating okay x will have a, a bigger voltage rating because see here uh, insulation is required where insulation is basically dependent upon voltage and the size will depend basically on the whatever insulations are provided okay so where the resistance is less we need to provide more insulation and more insulation means volt more voltage rating or more voltage rating means bigger will be the size now coming to the next question in swimman's method the test of the dc machine the shunt machine is run as basically in case of uh, swimman system uh, that shunt machine is basically run on no load okay so shunt machine we know we can run shunt machine on no load so in swimman test no load operation of the shunt machine is basically done now coming to the next question in a DC machine, the brushes are basically made up of brush plays an important role because this is the move it connects the movable part with the fixed part. Okay, so here we are basically using the electrographite, one such material which is having a higher lubricating property as well as spark resistance properties also there. There must not be huge amount of sparks due to if some gap is there. Okay, the spark reduction and the lubrication has to be good, inherent lubrication has to be good. Now coming to next question uh, dc series motor should never be operated on no load so here uh, suppose uh, all of the options are given you just read it through the field current is initially zero the motor does not start uh, it will it will take too long to accelerate or none of this basically here it is none of this why it is none of this you know when we start or try to operate dc motor as a no load it will develop huge amount of speed and that speed will ultimately destroy the machine and none of the points certify what opening of a DC uh, or operating a DC series motor on no load can do is not ex uh, not uh, explained by these three points. Okay. Now the uh, next question is a differentially compound DC motor drives is a constant power load if the series of the field gets short circuited. Okay. If the series field gets short circuited, so compound differential compound uh, compounding uh, you mu uh, you must be knowing that the series field coil and the shunt field coils whatever is there they act in opposite direction they actually cancel each other so the armature current remains the same but the speed falls okay if we short circuit the field series field if we short circuit the armature current will not be uh, will not have an too much of an effect but the speed will certainly fall now coming to the next question or last question for today the constant speed torque characteristics is observed in basically constant speed torque characteristics is observed in case of your here all the options are not correct none of this will be the correct answer here shunt motor will have the uh, constant speed torque characteristics suppose uh, suppose uh, here i am uh, mentioning in this direction torque and in this direction suppose speed i am mentioning so speed will suppose this is the constant speed line so for a shunt motor it will be like this okay for a differentially compound motor it will be like this and for a uh, cumulative compound motor it will be like this something like this uh, will be the uh, representation and uh, the dc series motor it will also be in this zona only and it will be uh, it will not be because you know that torque is proportional to phi ia okay so torque is pro is basically your phi square or ia square or ia square we can observe uh, ia square we can observe 
ok. So, here also you, you will see that uh, there is a larger variations in the NDC series model we can observe, but not a constant characteristics you can see. So, today we will be ending our DC, uh, DC machine part and from the next day onwards we will be starting our transformer part and in the transformer part again I will be taking up uh, on three such classes. Uh, 30 important questions that are very much relevant and asked in previous years questions as well and uh, very much important uh, for our prospect okay so thank you for staying up to this point if you have any doubt you can call us at this number provided already you know that 833-506-7725 or call us at your uh, or email, you can also email us at uh, our this number and email us at this email id as well okay electrical easy at the rate gmail.com if you have any doubts you can also uh, post your comments in the comment section as well uh, i will we will try to answer all of them whatever you have okay thank you everyone for listening up to this point thank you